Good morning, Gospel Light Baptist Church. This is Pastor Seth for Sunday morning uh, church services. Wanted to greet you real quick and thank you for joining us this morning for uh, Sunday for church services. Uh, we'll be in the book of Luke today for our services uh, for, for scripture reading, Luke chapter number 22. And as you're turning there, I talked with Pastor James this week. And he wanted me to greet you. He wanted me to let you know that they're still on safari and that they are traveling around in the, in the United States still thinking about you, praying for you, and wanted to send them, send your greetings, their greetings to you. As well, he wanted me to let you know if you have any prayer requests or anything uh, you need prayer for, please contact the, uh, the church office. Uh, Pastor Amos is there. He can help us in those areas. We'd like to pray for you. We'd like to be able to uh, take your need before the Lord during this time. And as well, uh, if you need to get in touch with Pastor James, feel free to give him an email and uh, write him an email. And uh, if you have any questions for that, you can also contact the church office for those things as well. And uh, it's a privilege to be before you today to be able to preach just a simple message to you from God's Word. We're praying uh, that uh, churches will be open soon. And we're already making preparations as to uh, services and things when the country does and the government does allow us to open. And we'll be able to get back at uh, in-person ministry and in-person uh, preaching and teaching. And we look forward to that. We're praying for you and uh, praying God blesses you. Take your Bibles this morning. Look at uh, Matthew or Luke chapter number 22 and verse number 31 will be our scripture message uh, portion for the day. And the title of the message would be, Be Strong in the Lord, Strengthen Thy Brethren. Be Strong in the Lord. Verse number 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and that when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. The title of the message this morning, as I said, was Strengthen Thy Brethren. As we are continuing in this time, we need to be strengthening one another. We need to seek strength from the Bible, from the Lord, to strengthen one another. And uh, we can have that ability to strengthen one another as we continue during this time. Let's pray and we'll jump into the scripture this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you now. We thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the time in your word. Lord, I pray that you be with each and every one of the folks that are listening and watching this sermon this morning. I pray that you be with them, take care of their need as you promised to do. Lord, uh, we just quote the scripture to you that the Bible says that my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. I pray that each member of the church, each person watching and those around, not even just in Uganda, but around the world that may be watching, I pray that they would, Lord, be strengthened today. As we read your word, I pray that they would allow the Holy Scripture to strengthen them, would allow them to, uh, to, to guide them and direct them, Lord, and take care of our, taking care of our needs. Lord, I pray you just be with us today, help us have a good rest of the day today, and Lord, please open the country soon so we can get back together meeting with one another in the services. We love you now. We thank you for what you've done for us, for dying on the cross, for making way for us to go to heaven. We thank you for... Lord, just providing for the things we need, our, our, our needs, Lord. Continue to bless us. In your name we do pray. Amen. As the Lord here is talking to Peter, Simon he calls him, he says, Simon, Satan has a desire to sift you like wheat. And Satan has that same desire to sift each and every one of us today. Whether you're a pastor, whether you're in the ministry, whether you are just a layman in the church and you're working for the Lord, whether you own a business and you just come to church, no matter what you're doing, if you are saved, born again, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross of Calvary for our sins and for us, Satan has a desire to sift you and I. No one is exempt from this. Everybody has that desire towards them. It doesn't matter if you're the pastor of a huge church or you're just someone that just got saved just yesterday. Satan has a desire to sift you. 
and he has that desire. We see that in the New Testament, in, or in the Old Testament, excuse me, in Genesis. He desired to sift Adam and Eve when he tempted them in the Garden of Eden. We see that clearly. And how did he use the, as a way of remembrance, how did he, what did he use to, to, to sift Adam and Eve, specifically Eve? He used God's word. He used the scripture. And he used what God said, and he changed just a little bit. Hath God, God said, ye shall not eat of the, the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, or touch it. That's how he changed it. He changed God's word. He wants to sift them. He had a desire there in the, in the, in the New Testament with Peter to sift him, and we see that he does sift him a bit later on in the scripture. He had a desire to even sift and, and, to change, and, and to challenge and change Jesus Christ when he was on earth. In the time there in Luke, he tried to sift the Lord. So he will sift us. He will try to sift us. You see, he even sifted Job in the Old Testament. We'll see that in a few minutes. But Satan has this desire to sift you. Everything Satan has, he doesn't want to help you at all. You may think it might be good, it might be all right to turn to the world and do things, but he has a desire to sift you and to take you away from the Lord in, uh, in, in your spiritual walk. He can't have your soul if you're saved, but he has a desire to get you away as far away as he can from the Lord to sift you in that direction. So as we look at the, the scripture this morning, we know that God, from God's word, that we must trust in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. We must also learn that, the, that it is impossible to live the Christian life unless we depend entirely upon the Lord. This is where the struggle begins. Same struggle Peter had in the New Testament here, we have today. We don't want to trust fully entirely upon the Lord, but we must. It's imperative. We must if we're going to live a life for the world. The struggle with all the things we call our strengths that are really our weaknesses. When God brings us to the end of ourselves and we yield ourselves to Christ, He enables us to live the Christian life in His power. Look back at the scripture this morning, Luke chapter 21, 22, verse 20, uh, 31 to 34. Luke 22, 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before thou shalt thrice, three times, deny that thou knowest me. And as you read the scripture on down, the, uh, down in the passage, you find that that comes to be true. That Peter denies him. But we have that same weakness, that same, that same situation that Peter's in. We have that same mindset. Oh, we're going to be with the Lord forever until oh, I'm on the Lord's side, no matter what comes. But well, we come to Corona time, this season of this virus that has come, and we see we're not on the Lord's side. We do things that we normally wouldn't do because we're not going to church every Sunday. We're not going to Bible study on Wednesday nights. We're not coming early to church for morning Sunday morning Bible study. We find that we say we're on the Lord's side, but when it comes down to it, we don't, or we are not on the Lord's side. We do other things. I encourage you this morning, have you spent time in His Word this morning? Have you spent time with the Lord? He wants to talk to you. He doesn't just have to talk to you at church. He can talk to you anytime when you're reading His Word. He will speak to you through His Word, His inspired Word of God, His living Word. He will speak to us if we'll just take the time to listen to Him. The devil, uh, the, excuse me, the Lord singles out Peter and tells him that the devil wants to weaken him so that he cannot be a testimony for Christ. That he should be. The Lord said, When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. This was the Lord's plan for Peter. He wanted Peter to be strengthened. Strengthened in the Lord. So when the testing came and the trials came, he could strengthen his brethren in the Lord. The, the, 
a, a side point here. You become a target for Satan when you determine that you're going to follow Christ. So let's look here at, 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 at the scripture this morning. And we'll see four different things here that will make us strong from the scripture here this morning. First of all, we see the scriptures make us strong. The scriptures make us strong. Peter wrote in his epistle that he was moved along by the Holy Spirit to pen the word, to pen God's word. He said in uh, 2 Peter chapter number 1 verse 21, 2 Peter chapter number 1 verse 21, he says the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They were moved by the Holy Ghost to pen the scripture. The Holy Ghost moved them, inspired them, and, and told them exactly what he wanted them to write. And they wrote down what the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, told them to write. God gave Peter the words to pen this scripture in, 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 in uh, Luke chapter, here in, in the scripture. The word strengthened his brethren. Sorry, God gave Peter the words to pin that what that would what would strengthen his brethren, strengthen his brethren. God uses His word to make us strong. The word of God is so very powerful. If we just simply realize that the word of God is a living book, it's not just a book like anything else, but God's holy word is alive. It's powerful. The Bible says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Any sword that has two edges, the sharpest sword in the world, or the sharpest knife in the world, the Bible is more powerful than that. It pierces even to the dividing of the soul, the spirit, and, the, the thought, and knows the thoughts and intents of our hearts. The Bible is powerful. And we so often just let it sit, maybe on the table, maybe uh, on our bed, next to our bed, and we don't use it when we should. But we see when we use the scriptures, the scriptures will make us strong. Number two, the sifting done by Satan makes us strong. It sounds very different that you would say Satan's sifting would make us strong. You may think it's different, but it is true. God strengthens his children when he allows Satan to sift us, to test us, to tempt us. Look at Job chapter number 23. Job chapter number 23. Job 23 and verse number 10 in the Old Testament, before Psalms and Proverbs is Job. In chapter number 23, verse 10, the Bible says, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. As gold. Verse 11. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Mainly in verse number 10 there, when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. You know, when, when Job was tempted by Satan, and he was tried and sifted by Satan, the Lord allowed that to happen. You can read it in the scripture. The Lord allowed Satan to do that. And when the Lord allows Satan to tempt you, or to sift you, or to, to try you, the Bible says we can come forth as gold. But first of all there, we have to use the scripture. It makes us strong. And then we have to work through the sifting, and when the sifting is done by Satan, and the Lord allows it, it will make us strong. The Lord used Satan to reveal to Peter the weakness of his life, and the need he had to trust Christ for strength. You know, when troubles come, what's the first thing we do? We go to someone. Oh, pastor, help me with this. I'm in a trial and in, 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 in a sifting. Oh, brother so-and-so, help me with this. Mom, Dad, Jaja, help me. I'm in a trial and I can't get out. We go to someone. But the first person we should go to is the Lord 
when we're in that trial. And he will help us through his scripture to make us strong. And once we've gone through that sifting, we can look back and we see we've gone through that time. And uh, a situation that happened that was a trying time. And we can look back and say, God took me through that. We can go forward. Like the children of Israel said, God took us through Egypt. We can go forward. We can do it. So we see, first of all, the scripture makes us strong. And then second of all, we see the sifting done by Satan can make us strong. Thirdly, the Savior's prayer makes us strong. And this is an interesting thought to me. I, I enjoy this point here. Because it's as if God, God, Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, is praying for us. The Bible says he makes intercession for us. Look at Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8, verse 34. Romans chapter number 8, verse 34. As you're turning there, 8, verse 34, the Bible says, Who is he that condemneth? It is, it, it is Christ that died. Yea, rather that he is risen, that is, yea, rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Christ is praying for us, making intercession for us on our behalf to God the Father. It's amazing. Look back at the scripture in, in, in our, 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 our text for the day. In verse number 32, But I have prayed for thee, the Lord Jesus Christ is telling Simon, that I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Christ is literally praying for Simon, Peter, that his faith would not fail. That his faith would continue and go forward and carry him through the situation even he was about to face. He knew what was going to happen next and denying him three times. But he prayed that his faith would not fail. And then he says, not, And that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You know, sometimes God allows us to go through a trying time to help us encourage another brother and sister in Christ. We can go through a situation and it will help someone else that is currently going through that situation. I, I don't like it sometimes, but God allows it, it allows it to happen for some reason. I don't know why, but it's in his plan. So the Lord Jesus said unto Peter, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. No doubt, Peter had gotten to the point in his life he was at the lowest. He was down. He was discouraged. But he had to learn that Jesus Christ is the solid rock which we stand on. Just like the song says, In Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. When we realize that Jesus Christ is the rock, the solid rock we stand on, we can go through this trial, this sifting, as the scripture puts it, as the Lord tells uh, Simon here. The Savior is praying for us. He's rooting for us. Just as we watch a football game and our team is playing, maybe you root for the Cranes here in Uganda when they play football. And you have people that dress up. You have people that that get excited and cheer on the team as they're going to continue going and going, just like those fans, like we would for that football team. Christ is in heaven praying for us, cheering us on to help us to be strong for him. He's up there praying for us. Never lose that in the sight of your mind, that God in heaven is hearing the prayers of Jesus Christ for us, to encourage us, to help us, to strengthen us, to take care of our need. There's intercessory prayer going to on our behalf.
and we are strengthened by his prayers. So first of all, we see the scripture makes us strong. Be reading your Bible. The sifting done by Satan makes us strong. Look through that trial. Keep going. There's a side that it's coming up. It's almost finished. God has given us the strength to carry on in the past. He'll continue to give us the strength to go on in the future. And thirdly, the Savior's prayer makes us strong. Just remember, the Savior's prayer makes us strong. And then fourthly and finally this morning, the Spirit-filled life makes us strong. The Spirit-filled life makes us strong. We see here, after the account when uh, this portion of the Scripture is finished, and, God is sent, and, G, and the Lord Jesus Christ ascends back to heaven, and He commands the disciples to wait, and all of these things happen, Peter made it through that sifting. We see here on the day of Pentecost, Peter stood and preached with boldness, to the same crowd he had behaved cowardly before earlier. What made the difference? How is it that Peter, at the time the cock before the cock even crowed, he denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times, and to the same exact people he was able to stand up and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and see such wonderful things happen in ministry there? What was the difference? We see the difference was in Acts chapter number 2, verse 4. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They allowed the Holy Ghost to fill them. They had to push out. In order to fill something, you have to be empty of something. If you have a jerry can, maybe you are there and you want to put petrol in the jerry can or something of that nature. And you have water in that jerry can. Can you put petrol or, or, or kerosene in a, a jerry can, in a, a container, when it has water? No. You can, but it won't do anything for you. It's not good. It won't mix. It'll give you trouble if you're trying to put petrol in a vehicle. It will give you trouble, mess up the engine. If you're trying to start your, 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 your kerosene or paraffin uh, cooker, I don't think it'll work very well with water in it. But you see that you have to empty what's in that jerry can first, whether it be water or even air has to be emptied out to, in order to put the petrol or kerosene in. So we see here that we, as they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they first had to get rid of some things in their life. So Holy Ghost could come and fill them and use them. Not the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, but the filling. There's a difference there. The filling. We can ask God, and we should ask God every morning, to fill us with the Holy Ghost. To help us witness to lost souls. To help us encourage those people that are in trouble and, and hurting. The Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost can fill us and can be use us, and it makes us strong. So the Bible says here in Acts 2, 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The filling of this Holy Ghost is a command. Does Jesus Christ... Control your life. We're commanded to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. We're commanded to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He does not... Uh, does the, sorry, excuse me. Does the, Holy, does the Lord Jesus control your life? He does not control our life if we have not yielded our life to His control. So this morning, four points. The scripture will make us strong. The sifting done by Satan makes us strong. And the Savior's prayer makes us strong. And if we are filled with the Holy Ghost, it will help us to make us strong. The verse of chapter, Luke chapter 22, 31 and 32. And the Lord said unto Simon, said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, he has a desire to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. That's the illustration. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. The picture of Satan wanting to sift us. He wants us. He has a desire for us. And he has a desire to sift us, as a desire of sifting. When you desire, when, the Satan, when Satan desires to sift you, 
Think of that sifting process. Maybe you have a grain or, or, or something you're sifting and removing the husk or the shell to. Satan has a desire. He wants to take that, 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 that seed, whatever it may be, just like that seed of corn or whatever, uh, whatever grain it may be, and he wants to take that, throw the seed away, but keep the husk, keep the outside, the shell, and it does nothing. God, on the other hand, has a desire for us to take us and sift us, and the outcome be he keeps the seed, if it's a piece of corn, and throws the outer shell out and the husk out so he can plant that corn and there will be a purpose and a direction and a, and, and a, a way forward for that seed. But Satan does not. He's the exact opposite. He wants to throw that seed on the floor, on the ground. What happens when the seed goes on the ground? Birds come and eat it. The, the dry uh, season air and sun dries up that seed and can do nothing but withers away and dies. And it's good for nothing. But God wants to see us flourish. He wants us to see when Satan comes to sift us, and we go through this and strengthen ourselves, strengthen our brethren in the Lord, and we are strong in the faith of the Lord. He, see, he wants us to do that. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to be listening and, and thankful for the prayer of the Lord. He wants us to be thankful and read the scripture to make us strong. He wants us to realize that the sifting of Satan helps us to become strong and worthy and to continue on for the Lord. And he wants us to be spirit-filled with the Holy Spirit so we can continue to stay strong for him. And when we are, the Bible says, and when thou art converted, because when Satan is taking us down a path, we have to be converted from that path to a different way. Just like we're saved, we're converted from a lost and dying world to the family of Christ. There has to be a change. When we change and we realize that this is here to help us become strong and we're staying strong in the Lord, when we are converted from that, we can strengthen our brethren. We can strengthen our brethren. I hope we're strengthening each other when we go through trials, when we go through tempting, through, through things like this. I hope we can be strengthening each other in this thing. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you now. We thank you for your scripture. We thank you for your ministry where you're in heaven right now praying for us. We thank you for the fact that when Satan does try to sift us and takes us through a trial, Lord, we can use that to strengthen ourselves and strengthen our brethren. Lord, I thank you for being able to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, I know I'm saved. I know when I get saved, I'm indwelled by the Holy Ghost. But Lord, I pray that when I go through trials, I will ask you for an extra helping and an extra in fulfilling of the Holy Spirit in my life. That way I can do the work that you have us me to do. And I pray everybody else watching this message this morning would continue to stay faithful. Lord, I pray that they would continue to stay in their word, in your word. Lord, I pray that they would just continue through this trial that we're all going through. Lord, I pray that they would be reminded that you are in heaven right now, interceding for us on our behalf to God the Father. And Lord, I pray that they would decide every morning to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just on our own power, but totally completely, 100% relying on the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for letting us be able to meet. Lord, I pray you'd open churches once again quickly, Lord, so we can fellowship together. Lord, I pray that we would continue to strengthen our brethren and be strong in you. We'll give you all the glory and the honor and the praise for what you'll do in our lives. In your name we do pray. Amen. Thank you for taking this time this morning to hear the word preached. I pray that you would continue to pray for us. Pray for our pastors here at uh, Gospel Light Baptist Church. Pray for Pastor James as he's in the States traveling. Pray for the family, health and safety. 
I pray that if you have any questions or have anything we can pray for you about, do please call the church. Please get in touch with us. If you need someone to come by and visit, we would love to be able to come by and visit and, and just encourage you in the Lord. And uh, please stay faithful. Please stay faithful. Have a wonderful rest of the day, and Lord bless.